Hello everybody, it's Philippa, history travel writer at British History Tours and I want to talk to you today about Henry, Duke of York, better known to history as Henry VIII. And if any of you know anything about the way titles are dished out in the British monarchy, you will know that the Duke of York is the title uh, reserved for the second son of the reigning monarch and indeed Henry was the second son of Henry VII and his wife Elizabeth of York. He had an elder brother called Arthur. Arthur um, was Prince of Wales. Um, Henry, like I say, was Duke of York. Now, Arthur, um, by the time he died at the age of 15, was already a Knight of the Garter. He was uh, Prince of Wales and he was Lord of the Marches. And his seat up at Ludlow Castle was where he was when he, he died. He had also already got married. He was married to Catherine of Aragon, the same Catherine of Aragon who would become the first wife of Henry VIII, um, with all the difficulties that followed on from that, which is probably a story for another day. But I'm at Worcester Cathedral, and the reason I'm talking to you about this from Worcester Cathedral is this is where Arthur's tomb and Arthur's chantry is. His heart is buried at St Lawrence's Church in Ludlow, not uh, not too far at all from Ludlow Castle, but his um, his body uh, and his, is is here, uh, his his tomb and his chantry are here, and the funeral service was here. The funeral service was extremely, um, I was going to say lavish, but you know it was it was a large service. It was not attended by Henry the Seventh or Elizabeth of York. Um, there are theories as to why it was here and not Westminster Abbey. Um, the, the, a couple of main points from that it's it's quite close to Ludlow here and it was April and the roads not being like they are now would have been fairly impassable and the other thing is to keep potentially to keep the fact that the heir to the Tudor dynasty uh, the, it would he would only have been the second Tudor monarch to keep his death a little bit more low-key but that was balanced with the fact that they also needed to show that the Tudors were the rightful kings, that they had um, the, the, the right to be um, the monarchs and the kings of, of England. And that has been shown in, the, uh, in his chantry. Now, I'll put some photographs of his chantry on, uh, on Facebook in, in a short while, and you'll be able to see just how ornate it was. And you might, if you, if you start to look, you might see a similarity to the Houses of Parliament. And the reason for that is that the same stonemasons that were building the Henry VII Chapel at Westminster Abbey were employed to build Arthur's Chantry here. And the design for the Houses of Parliament are a, uh, were taken from the Henry VII Chapel at Westminster Abbey because they're over the road from each other. So you'll see some links there. But the, the Chantry here is extremely interesting in terms of its Tudor heraldry. And in fact, I just heard a guide in there call it sort of the A to Z of Tudor heraldry. And it, it really is. I mean, it's absolutely covered. And like I say, it's for, for, the, for a purpose of displaying the fact that Arthur was rightful king, you know, he would have been the rightful king, the Tudors were rightful kings, and it's, so it has the York Rose, it has the Lancaster Rose, it has the Tudor Rose. There is the Beaufort Portcullis, which you will now recognise as, um, as the emblem of Parliament, which actually comes from um, the, the Beaufort family line. Beaufort means beautiful castle, and the portcullis was um, their badge. It was actually an illegitimate line of Henry VII's mother, Margaret Beaufort. That's on there. Um, there is the Prince of Wales feathers, there's the ostrich feathers, there is the pomegranate of Catherine of Aragon, who is his wife, and there is um, there's also emblems of the, uh, the, the, the a quiver of arrows, who was the, that was the emblem of Isabella of Spain, which was Catherine of Aragon's mother, all designed to stamp home the message that the Tudors were the correct dynasty, they were the right people to take the throne, they were but this death wasn't going to shake that. It's okay, we've got another son. Now, the the death of Arthur um, obviously had an impact on Henry in that he lost his brother. He then became heir to the throne, which changed his life. It changed the way he was being brought up. But it also led to a really personal tragedy. With the loss of Arthur, they, Henry VII and his wife Elizabeth York only had Henry as a surviving son. And 
you know, the idea is you had more than one son in, um, just in case. And so, and Elizabeth fell pregnant again. But unfortunately, she died in childbirth on her 37th birthday at the Tower of London, giving birth to a baby girl. And Henry was 11 years old at the time. So, and he'd also been quite close to his mother, not being first in line to the throne. He'd been far more in his mother's company than his father's company growing up. And it's not really talked about, but the impact of his mother's death on him must have been, been severe and great. So, so Worcester is... You know, it's one of those, um, Worcester Cathedral is one of those um, places where you could say it's a bit of a what if in history. You know, we've got Arthur here. What if Arthur had, had lived? What if we didn't have Henry VIII? You know, the country could have been, uh, could have looked quite different in terms of our, our religion and even our landscape because, of course, Henry VIII dissolved um, all the monasteries. So there you are from Worcester Cathedral today. I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.